Hi, welcome to Coding Droplets and thank you for watching this video. This is a complete course to develop .NET applications or services with gRPC. So this video is part of a series and this is the first video of the gRPC tutorial series. You can check out the playlist link that is mentioned in this video description for finding other videos in this series. Now, we used to develop solutions which contain a bunch of microservices. Let us take an example of an e-commerce solution. So the solution will contain some microservices like account services, inventory services, shipping services, etc. So these microservices should have to exchange data one of the popular choices of building API is REST. You would have probably heard about it. Now I'll walk you through gRPC. In this video, I will show you what is gRPC, gRPC basics, protocol buffers, different types of gRPC services, gRPC streaming, etc. So compared to REST, gRPC provides greater performance. gRPC is way faster and more robust as it defines a specific set of rules each request and response should adhere to. And also gRPC is more secured. So we will be seeing all these details. Don't miss the upcoming videos in this channel. Please subscribe the channel named Coding Droplets. Also, don't forget to press the bell icon so that you will get notified once we upload new videos. Now, first, let's see what is gRPC. So, gRPC is a free and open source framework developed by Google. gRPC allows you to define request and response for RPC remote procedure call and handles the rest for you. So I will be showing you how we can define request and response while implementing the gRPC service. So if we define the request and response, gRPC will be developing the rest of the code automatically for us. So I will show you those things while the implementation. It is modern, fast, efficient and low latency. And next is a very important point. It is built on top of HTTP 2. So till now we were using HTTP 1. Now HTTP 2 is having a lot of advantages over HTTP 1 that we will be seeing in a later stage. Now next is also a very important point, gRPC streaming. So gRPC supports streaming data and easy to implement authentication load balancing, locking, and monitoring. So in the previous slide, we have talked about RPC, which is also called Remote Procedure Call. So let us see what is RPC. RPC stands for Remote Procedure Call. In your client, you can directly call the function on the server. So that means just assume that you have a function or a method named create product in your server. So normally, if we are using a REST API, we will initiate a HTTP request. Most probably, it will be a POST request for creating products and all. So the post in the POST request, we will provide the URL and the, uh, we will also share the data, the product details, along with the HTTP request. But here, in gRPC, we don't need to do all those things. We can directly call the method which is in the server. That means we can just call server.createProduct. Then we can pass the parameter which contains the product details. So it is very easy to implement. Now you might be thinking that we have to develop both client and server applications in the same language or framework. 
So I have told you that we can just call the method or function directly from the client. So the, the function or method which is in the server can be called directly from the client. So that doesn't mean that both server and client has to be developed in a single language or in a same language or framework. It can be developed in different languages. The server can be developed in another language and the client can be in another language. But gRPC can connect both. gRPC is supported in many languages. So let us have a look on those things. So you can open grpc.io which is the official website of grpc and here you can see there is an option under get started when we click on that here you can see the list of supported languages of grpc so grpc support these many languages as of now at the date which i record this video but you can check it uh, while you are seeing this video grpc might have added some more languages so you can go to this website and see which are the languages supported by grpc and here also you can click on any language and there are some basic tutorials available in this website now the next important topic in grpc is protocol buffers so let's see what is protocol buffers in grpc so protocol buffer, which is also called as proto buff, is an ideal interface definition language for gRPC. It's where you basically store your data and function contracts in the form of proto file. So the file extension will be dot proto. So as I told, we will mention the request and response of the grpc service in this proto file and the proto buff will help grpc to generate the code for us so grpc will automatically generate the remaining code for us to use now this is a sample of proto file or the proto buff so here you can see that in our solution explorer there is a folder named protos and under this protos folder we will place all the proto files which we need to create in our GP, uh, grpc service so if you see this proto file you can see here there is a section named message hello request so this is a request basically and this request is having a value name that is a string data type and there is another message reply and it is also having a value which is also a string and the name of that value is message and here in the service it is mentioned like say hello this is the method name or the function name which we can call from the client and while calling this particular method, we have to pass the parameter. So that is the request. So in this hello request, there should be one value name and we will it will return a reply that is of type hello reply. And this hello reply will be having a value message. Okay, so we will be seeing all these things in detail at the time of implementation. I'm just showing this for you to understand how is a proto file. Next, let's see what is the advantages of HTTP2. So I told you gRPC uses HTTP2 for communication. HTTP2 was released in 2015 and it supports multiplexing means Client and server can send messages parallelly using the same TCP connection. So normally in HTTP 1, the communication is like the client will send one request and the server receives it and the server will send the response. But in HTTP 2, client can send a single request or multiple requests 
and server can parallelly send a single response or multiple response. So that is the next point. Server can send multiple messages for a single request from the client. Hence, we can stream data using HTTP2. Now, HTTP2 also supports header compression, which was not there in HTTP1. So as you know, if the data is compressed, it will improve the performance. And the next point is also very important. HTTP2 supports binary and protobuf is a binary protocol. So the data will be sent in binary format, not like a normal plain text format. So the size will be very less and that also will improve the performance. And also HTTP is secure. So as I told, it is not a plain text and it is in a binary format. So we, we know that the data is in more secured way. Hope you're excited. So please don't forget to give me a thumbs up for this video. Now let us see what are the different types of gRPC APIs. So in gRPC, we can create four different types of APIs. The first one is called as unary, or we will call it as gRPC unary. So unary API is similar like REST API, similar in the sense it will send a single request to the server and the server will respond back with a single response. So that procedure is same in REST APIs. The client will send a single request and for that request, the server will respond back. So the same scenario in gRPC is called unary API or gRPC unary. Now the next is the second type is server streaming. So in server streaming, the client will send a request to the server and the server can send back multiple responses. So it can be like a streaming kind of data. Continuously server can send some 10 or 20 or 100 responses and the client can receive all those responses. But the client will only send one single request to the server. Now the third is client streaming. So the client can send multiple requests, but the server will respond back with one single response. So the streaming is happening from the client side. The client can send continuously send data to the server and the server can respond back at any time. Like after, for example, after receiving some five or six data from the client, the server will respond back. All these things will be completely asynchronous. So uh, as per we have mentioned in the server side, the server can respond back anytime. Now the fourth type of API is called bidirectional. So bidirectional means the client can send multiple requests and the server can respond back with multiple responses. So in two, that will be a two-way streaming. And that is also possible in gRPC. So we will be implementing all the four types of APIs in a demo project. So now I will show you how we can create a gRPC service in Visual Studio. So we are just creating a demo project in which we will be implementing all the four types of gRPC services in a later session. So first, let me create the demo project. Now I have opened Visual Studio and clicking on create a new project. And while searching for the project templates, you can just search for gRPC. And here you can see there is an option ASP.NET Core gRPC service. You can select this. Now click on next and I'm naming it as gRPC service demo 
and clicking next the framework which I am using is dotnet 6 and clicking on create fine now the project has been created and you can see the project files in the solution explorer so as I have mentioned there is a protos folder in our solution explorer in which greet.proto so this is an auto generated proto file so we can open that and you can see a sample proto file which has been created automatically along with the project also we have a services folder in which the greater service has been implemented so we will be discussing all these things in a later session or in an upcoming video so that's it for this video hope you liked it please like share and leave your comment so see you all in the next video thank you